Hi, welcome to the channel, which is about image processing, image analysis, and some general science chat. I don't do gels and blots, measuring Western blots and so on. Um, I've always been curious as to how the image analysis is done on these types of images. And so I generally have a question for anybody who's watching this. What is the best way to do it? I've noticed that in ImageJ and Fiji, there is a gels plugin but to me it seems a bit subject to interpretation um, and I suppose most image analysis actually is but let's have a look at how, the, how it's normally done using the gels uh, plugin and, and I want to consider whether or not using just simple thresholding and regions might be an alternative and I'm curious to know what people think about how you should measure a gel. So as I said in the, the introduction, the, the, the channel is about chat, science chat and image analysis and image processing. And in this particular video then, I'd like us to have a chat about what is the best way to analyze a, a gel or a blot. Because it's not something that I normally do. It's not my particular science. So let me open up the gel sample that comes with image J, or Fiji, sorry. Now, there is a gel analyzer, and so those of you who measure gels will know this. Um, you first of all need to make a, 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 a lane, a box that marks the lane, and you go to the gels and you make this your first lane. And then you can make a second lane and go to the gels and do select next lane and then to the third lane okay and then quite simply you go to the gels again and you plot the lanes so this is the bit that i'm not entirely sure about uh, i've seen this done on some tutorials and it seems what you do is that these humps here obviously represent the five blobs. You use the line tool to very carefully mark each blob. And then you use the wand tool to measure it. Okay, so you see the yellow area. So it looks like you're measuring area under the curve and then you take another line tool and you have to get these quite accurate so I'll decide where you're going to measure and then one tool measure that and so on seems to me there's kind of well it's a bit subjective Oh, see, I mean, it depends on how you how you draw these lines. That one's far too big. Anyway, so you get the point. That's that's how the gel tool works. It's not not the way I would have thought to do it. And as I say, I I don't I don't do this type of analysis. So I'm curious to hear what others think. I'm going to reset this. I need to get rid of this one. So that will be under selections. Um, select none. Okay, if I was coming to this not knowing anything about the gels tool, I would probably approach this in a different way. And I don't know if this is right, but this is why I'm curious to just get trying just trying to get to the right size. Okay, well, I would probably draw a box around the bit I was interested in. Let me just zoom up a little bit. So I would draw a box around that. Just try and get it in just the right position. Now ideally what I would want would be to measure the amount of that black blob which is in that box. And I would do that by using a threshold tool. So I'll pull this threshold back a little bit until I've got only the bit that I'm interested in. Let me just get this. 
So let's say that just about covers the, the first blot blob and it's within this box. It's not bleeding into this channel. So I will choose, oh, first of all, set my measurements to make sure I've got the area and the integrated density. I'm going to limit my measurement to what's under the threshold and choose measure. Okay. And then I'd maybe want to move the box to here, but make sure that I don't have anything that's in this lane. Make sure it's all in this lane. Uh, do I need to change the threshold? Now maybe those of you who do these types of analysis wouldn't want to be um, changing the threshold all the time. I'm not too sure. Uh, let's go to the next one. In fact, let's move further along and do the smaller one. Let's do a small one here. And measure. Okay, so you see that it picks up the difference between the size of the blots. It doesn't really matter the size of this box as long as the box completely encompasses the object that we want to measure. Um, so if I measure again, having changed the size of the box, you see we get the same same value. If I change the threshold value to make to bring in more data then you'll see I get a slightly bigger response bigger measurement um, but if I change the size of the box so that it only covers half of that object then you see you get a smaller value so this is just to show you that that m method does indeed measure what's in the box but also what's under the threshold. That's the way I would have done it. I don't know if that's right. Curious what anybody thinks. Okay, so let me know what you think. Uh, leave me some comments in the chat there. Um, if you like this type of video, then subscribe, please. Um, give me a thumbs up, ring the bell for notifications, and let's make some more image analysis tutorials.